We had talked about this big case. It's the second case you've won now uh, in, in, against DuPont over this C8 chemical. And uh, there are almost 3,500 plus cases to go. And you've already won two cases for millions of dollars. We're talking about uh, cases, if you tally them up, uh, well into the billions of dollars. And yet for DuPont, this is this could just be cost of doing business. And you outlaw you. I should say you outline that dynamic in uh, this fiction book, Law and Disorder. Um, just uh, how does I mean, I know I may be jumping the gun a little bit, but the lead character who you call Deke, how does his career parallel your own? Well, I mean, what I've done, Sam, is I've borrowed from, I think, some of the best complex uh, trial lawyers in the country, people who, and there's only a handful of us throughout the entire country that try very complex cases against companies like Merck and Johnson & Johnson and DuPont and Dow Chemical. But after working with so many of them, those people at least for 35 years, um, I, I took Deke. Deke is a really a composite, Sam. He's a composite of all of these lawyers. And it, it's impossible to write a book like this and not borrow a little bit from yourself, the good and the barnacles. And that's what Deke is. Deke, Deke is going to appear in a series of books that is uh, Nick, Nicholas Deke Thomas is the character. And he's, it's in a setting where he's confronting exactly what, what we do for a living. But it's not told in a, although Publishers Weekly wrote a very good review of it, they, they said sometimes when I talk about politics, I become a little preachy. And I think I do. I think the idea is the story has to be told. Some of these political stories have to be told. For example, um, in, 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 in this law and disorder, we talk about a product called Ranadol, which is a birth uh, prevention pill. Um, and, and so what, that's just one of the stories. It's a, uh, it's, but it's one of the stories that tells about a similarity that we could name in five other cases that actually took right. place just within the last 20 years where somebody dies because of, um, be, because of the birth control pill. It, it also goes into a story about uh, it, it goes into a story uh, uh, about pollution that's causing exactly the kind of cancer from the case that I just finished up in uh, up in uh, the Ohio Valley. It, 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 it lends it lends itself to so many stories and so many parts of the stories, the backstories that the media doesn't tell. They're not even permitted to tell them, Sam. If I, for example, there were, as you know, there was a period of time when I was doing MSNBC right. uh, as, a, as a, 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 a contributor. There was no way I could tell these stories on MSNBC. Well, and, because they're advertising because they, they cut to you and go to the advertiser you just talked about. That's correct. And fortuitously, I was contacted by um, uh, RT Network, Russian Television International, to actually come on and do a regular show where these stories are told. And that story will that that show begins in September. It's called America's Lawyer. And I'll be dealing with some of the best uh, interviewing some of the best lawyers in the country where they tell the back story, Sam. It's not just the headline. It is who are the who are the CEOs who committed this fraud that should have them actually in prison? Who are the lower level managers who destroyed documents to try to cover up? Who are the scientists that were paid big money to make up a fabricated story saying the particular product is safe? Who are the regulators that were paid off in order for this to all occur. So those are the stories that will be told on America's Lawyer, which is really an extension of what I'm trying to do with these fiction books, to tell a story that you can read on the, you know, you can read the story on the beach. Right. It doesn't take long. You can read the book in a, you know, day, day and a half, and you can come away and say it was a good story, but you can also say I learned an awful lot in that story. And sometimes that's the only way. That's why I think Grisham is so brilliant. Grisham is brilliant because if you read a Grisham novel, you're going to hear things that you've never heard to where you almost go, is that true? And, and most of what he does is true. And so this is kind of a it's kind of an extension of that very thing, maybe a little more more detail, because this is what I actually do for a living. Uh, Grisham was is an attorney, but I don't know that he did this day to day. So we're trying to fold in some stories in the backstories to those stories that I think make it particularly interesting. Well, I, I mean, frankly, I think um, uh, both the, the, the show and the book couldn't be more timely. I mean, uh, knock on wood, we're going to have a Democratic president 
appoint uh, the next Supreme Court justice who will sit in place of and in Scalia tilting the court um, at least nominally to the left. And I think uh, there's a lot of cases uh, that about arbitration and about um, uh, wage theft mm-hmm. and about uh, uh, issues, access to the courts. That can be turned that around, I think yeah. That can be turned around. Yeah. And I think this is a time, and certainly um, uh, Law and Disorder, which people can find at lawanddisorderbook.com, and uh, your new show, which starts in September, America's yeah. Lawyer, are, are, are going to be two uh, really important pieces in making Americans genuinely appreciate the role of plaintiff's attorneys and the need uh, to push back against this uh, corporate uh, mal and misfeasance. And, yeah, of course, I, I, you doing, uh, you you know, uh, I'm I'm excited because now I know you're out of the heat of the battle. We'll have you back on Ring of Fire Yeah, a lot please more. do, Sam. I, I appreciate that. I'll be glad to appear in as much as you want me to and talk about a lot of these things that you and I used to talk about. Right. I just reached a very busy point in my life <laughs> where I, I, I just didn't have a minute. And, uh, and, and, and by the way, I, it's amazing the way you continue to build and build the audience uh, with Ring of Fire throughout this country. I'm, uh, there's not a day that goes by where I've, I'm not reminded by somebody calling me or emailing me and say, you know, caught the show again. Sam is a superstar. And I, I really appreciate you doing that, um, uh, continuing the, the spirit of Ring of Fire. Pap, uh, thanks so much. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Sam.